Five flares up, survivors. Two updates at once. 0.8.50 and 0.9.0 odd have added to the game the new seventh faction of Firestarters. New parts and crafts are already waiting for all those players with level 10 of Lunatic's reputation. The patches also include changes in game modes and some pinpoint corrections. Let's get to it. It's been several months since Dawn Children came into the spotlight with their disruptive inventions. The wastes will never be the same. But this doesn't mean that no one dares to change the long-held order. Even if the victory requires supernatural powers to get it. When Khan began uniting numerous gangs, an acute question of ideological accord came up. Even before the cross-out, people needed witches, wizards and psychics, guides between the worlds capable of lifting the veil of the mystery. After the catastrophe, people needed them even more. Khan seized the opportunity and had personal meetings with some of them, making attractive offers. No one knows for sure whether shamans really have any supernatural powers, but they definitely know how to present themselves. The frame of the gang consists of former actors, musicians and plain swindlers of remarkable appearance and unprecedented charisma. A dame called Ogdegon has managed to become a leader of the faction. Firestarters is a second faction of the Kaganate. It's them who pass Khan's order to crazy raiders and press for their carrying out. Firestarters as lunatics came from the west, overcoming the red cliffs. To control the troops, they need to move a lot. This is why their rides are crafted with both speed and long journeys in mind. Members of the faction don't need to be first-class fighters. It's more important for them to look spectacular. Each Firestarter supports their own history. This is why they use bright colors, unusual accessories, and loud noises. New parts is probably the most important thing about such events. Let's check out the parts of Firestarters. Bat. One of the standard cabins which Firestarters use in the wastes. Werewolf. This is one your loss can turn into a win. When destroyed, it leaves a guided drone, which can be exploded within 10 seconds. Shiv. The name Shiv underlines the sharp emotions you experience while driving it. Spikes on the wheels deal damage to the enemy. The faster you go, the harder it is for those under the wheels. Bigfoot. A big one for big problems. Can be shot easily, but it will go through where the others have to stop. Phoenix. A standard crossbow wasn't enough for Firestarter's engineers, so they attached some explosives to it. The bolt is attached to parts of the craft and explodes after some time. Incinerator emits an incendiary shell for a middle range distance. There's a burning area on the side of an explosion which deals additional damage to all of the aims. Solstice shoots three explosive wheels at once which detonate upon collision with the enemy or when they're shot. Meat Grinder Spinning screws, which you can move on. It allows strafing and deals physical damage upon collision. Gory Niche Once it was an agricultural flamethrower for destroying agrestle and pest. A rare case when the essence hasn't changed in time. It eats parts when it hits the target. They get up to 100% more damage depending on the heat rise. Prophet Ear, a harpoon which clings to enemies, allies, surroundings and drones, works over a distance of its toe length. Pursuer, a craft with this engine on takes down anything in its way. Small obstacles, gaping raiders, a roof. Only one engine can be installed on a craft. The speed of the craft increases the weaponry and missiles reload speed. The max effect is up to 30% with the speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Tormentor. 
During a limited amount of time, this contact weapon spins faster and deals additional damage, but it overheats and becomes more vulnerable when damaged. Constructional elements are traditionally given for achieving reputation levels. They can't be sold or bought on the market. Also, you can get portraits for the reputation progress. Second level is rewarded with Vesuvius. Seventh gets you Etna. And fifteenth, Sun God. To celebrate the appearance of fire starters, there's a new theme set on sale. Apart from cash and increasing the parts limit, the new Arsonist set includes Wildfire Ride on Screws, two rare junk bow shotguns, an epic Cerberus cabin, an early access to some of the Firestarter's constructional parts, a can of legendary Fire Salamander dye, a unique Capricorn sticker, Red Hot Portrait. Practice Mode is renamed into Patrol. Received Reputation, Combat Time and Base Capture are all increased. Those players who's left the battle beforehand but still fulfilling minimal participation requirements get all the earned reputation as well as an alternative reward in resources. In raids, we've slightly changed the speed of trucks and weaponry damage. In escort mode, both middle and high difficulty levels add leaders to the attacking crafts. Stay sure, they won't let you pass for nothing. Get your weaponry ready and snap back at the gang leaders. In defending the border, meanwhile, after capturing the tower, you'll see the wave counter. Finally, there's now quick crafting available with the parts kept in the warehouse. The system analyzes them and automatically chooses the most appropriate craft out of the previously uploaded drafts built during the new Faction Crafts contest. The ride will be painted in random color out of those you already have and will replace the current slot of the player. With the next update, all constructional parts, with no exceptions, get decreased power points. The thing is, their contribution to major crap parameters was too big. It was not uncommon that opponents with unequal firepower met on the combat field. We've even analyzed this situation given advice on crafting, right here in the garage. On one side, there was a craft with lots of constructional parts, yet weak weaponry. On the other hand, it was met by a well-armed ride with fewer parts. Their parameters were nearly equal, but actual power was much different. With the current decision, we automatically transfer such players into different categories. This update allows a more accurate selection of players based more on the installed weaponry. As for changing the durability and mass parameters, we've reworked those in the way that the looks of the part is more corresponding to the stated characteristics. This rebalancing allows for the parts to perform the exact function it's initially supposed to more effectively. The appearance of the harvers made the fights way more dynamic and interesting, but shifted the balance. As an epic part, it should have an advantage over the rare ones, but in current situation, this advantage turned out to be too huge. Unrivaled maneuverability and high speed of harvers allow for dodging the shells and machine gun fire, compensating for low structure. We've decided to make up for their efficiency, limiting their max speed, and to guarantee that, harvers appear less in the newbies' fights. Power points have been increased from 150 to 225. In this patch, we've continued to correct the explosive damage after transferring to the new mechanics. In the previous update, we've touched the most troubled guns. Now we've amended the remaining. Thanks to the new system of explosion calculation, it's now easier to shoot off the light weapon. That's why we've selectively increased its durability. Mandrake and Fuse, in the meanwhile, have become more effective. We've also doubled the work time of DT Cobra and proportionally decreased its received damage. Not only this keeps the total damage during the work time, but also gives a chance to those not noticing the weapon to get away from the field of fire. The icing on the cake is that screws are now called drills. It's easier 
and more on the stamp. This section includes often imperceptible yet still important corrections. The structure parameter has been renamed to durability. This name reflects the initial idea more correctly. The looks of the world map has been updated. The issue of invisible mines has been resolved. The players out of the match are now considered dead. Of course, we've traditionally reworked the part stability and description, corrected the issues with the likes counting on exhibition, optimized the work of mouses with more than three buttons. These are all just the chosen examples. The full list of the changes, both of this section and of any other, can be seen at the official website in the developer's diaries. Well, that's it for today, survivors. Crossout version 0.9.0 develops the earlier established changes and introduced a completely new faction. We hope you'll see value in our work and, as always, share your impressions in the comments. Believe us, we read each and every one of them. Press the bell icon to never lose another episode of the Garage and Crossout show. And don't forget to tell your friends about this channel. If you enjoy what you see, don't hesitate to press the like button. See you in combat.